I have found that I, I prefer putting concealer underneath on those areas to kind of, I don't know what it does. It almost kind of like smooths the area and gives you that like false perfect skin before you apply your foundation. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is all about educational beauty. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make your makeup look smooth for textured skin. I know how hard it is, how difficult it is to create a really nice smooth finish when you have bumpy skin or acne scarring. So I really wanna help you solve this problem. So keep watching. Now, if you do like this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. And don't forget, I'm over on Instagram too, and I would love it if you head on over there to say hi. Now let's head straight into the video. So this is a question I get asked quite a lot. How do you make textured skin or bumpy skin look smooth? Now that's a difficult one because obviously, you know, it's not like Photoshop where you can completely smooth it and then from every angle, it's gonna look super smooth. It's real life. And ultimately in certain different kind of lights or shading, shadows, you're gonna see that bumpiness, but we can still do our best. And honestly, I used to have super bumpy skin. So I totally understand the frustration and it really can affect your kind of confidence or you know wearing makeup or sometimes it can make you wear more makeup because you think the more you wear the more it's going to kind of cover it up it isn't really the case now today what i want to do is show you what i used to do and what i still do but when i feel like my skin is kind of bumpy or looking very textured i go through my skin goes through kind of phases then this is what i do to ensure that it is super smooth and really it's about your application process from skin care up to kind of the application of makeup and the setting of makeup. I'm also gonna go through which kind of textures of makeup products that you shouldn't probably mix because that in itself is gonna to help to enhance any bumpiness or any texture. Let's get on with it. First off, please excuse my hair. I literally have just dried it roughly and just I'm, I'm just tucking it behind the ears because it was either style my hair or film for YouTube. It's filming for YouTube. So, you know, let's just please, please ignore the fact that I have got this a bit of a, I don't know what's going on it just doesn't look me you know but anyway we're gonna ignore it and just carry on now i don't have anything on my face all i've done is wash my face with my face wash that's about it so let's move on i am going to start with my eye cream currently as you guys probably know from watching my recent videos i'm using the drunk elephant this is the sea tango multivitamin eye cream and i'm just going to put this on my finger and just kind of like put that around the eye area eye cream honestly it's just not really anything to do with whether your skin is looking or smooth but you know it's something that you should should wear you should start before you even see any lines so i would always recommend that now that's done we're going to move on to my skin treatment that i use which is the lancer advanced c radiance treatment this is like vitamin c with a slight amount of retinol in there i use retinol at night as well the retinol that i use at night is the lancer advanced retinol treatment honestly it has to be the only retinol product that i've used that i would say actually does work that is what really help to transform my skin from textured bumpy skin into pretty smooth skin I do have like I said I do have kind of like stages where sometimes I'm going through like it might be hormonal or it might just be that my diet's not very good or I'm not getting enough sleep and then I end up getting congested congested <laughs> why could I not say that congested and then that leads to kind of like bumpy skin textured skin so you know it doesn't come it doesn't mean you're never ever gonna get it again if you clear it once that is probably the one product that has really helped me I would suggest if you do start off with Lancer Advanced Retinol Treatment, then use it once a week first because you need to kind of get your skin used to it, like pace yourself, kind of get your skin skin into a routine of using it so that it doesn't feel overwhelmed all of a sudden with like retinol every night. We're going to move on to moisturizer. So I'm using my Wind Marrakesh Rich and because retinol can kind of like make your skin feel a little bit dry, I like to use a rich moisturizer and this one in particular is absolutely amazing. Next up, I'm going to use my Prime now I'm going to use the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. I find that this gives like a really nice smooth finish to my face. So I'm just kind of like smoothing that over. Now I feel like my skin is kind of ready for makeup. It doesn't feel overloaded with skincare. And sometimes when you look at the fact that someone has like maybe a four step routine where they have like four products they're applying in the morning before makeup 
application. It can sometimes sound like that's a lot of skincare and you know, isn't that gonna be a bit too much product, you know, on the skin? It really depends on how much you're using and also how much your skin is absorbing that product. So, okay, my skin takes this amount of product really well. It doesn't feel greasy. It feels like it's smooth and plus the primer on top has really kind of helped. I would leave, you know, a minute or so in between each product application so that I'm not just like piling it on before my skin's even absorbed the product. Moving on, we're gonna apply our concealer. I've recently been loving this concealer. The only reason I even started using it is because I needed a concealer which was slightly warmer because I'm super tanned right now. So I started using this one because it seemed like a really good color because I didn't have a darker shade of tart shape tape. So I'm using the, this is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and this color is warm beige and it's really good. I am so impressed with it. So anyway, we're gonna apply a little bit of this concealer here. Right, what I'm doing now is I'm buffing this into my skin. Now, obviously we wanna talk more about the rest of the face because the eye area is really kind of, it's down to how you usually prep your eyes, whether you use a primer or whether you use concealer like me. So we're gonna just move through this pretty fast. Now I've just got my setting powder. I'm using my Ben Eye Banana Powder and this is a powder puff. I'm just pressing this in. And then I just dust away the excess product with my Real Techniques setting brush. Next up, I'm gonna apply my concealer to my under eyes. How you apply your concealer is completely up to you. Like some people have commented saying, the amount that you put on is just too much for me or the amount that you put on isn't enough for me. You adjust it however much you want, like I mentioned earlier. I've put this amount of product here and here because that's gonna give me a slight lifted effect. Honestly, this amount is good for the type of coverage and the type of finish that I want. So now what I'm gonna do is I, I normally leave that for maybe one to two minutes max and then I go in and blend it. The reason I do that is because it starts to kind of like thicken up not thicken up but kind of like set a little bit so that when you start blending it the, the product stays in that area whereas when you first apply this product and you go straight in with a sponge you'll notice that it just is so fluid it just goes everywhere so i like to kind of just wait a couple of minutes and then i start blending it in so the product stays in that area and it gives you a much more flawless finish i've applied it in this area you area you can kind of like dot it on however you make shapes whatever you can do whatever you want now i'm going to get my sponge and i'm going to start buffing this in now I'm but when I say buffing I'm buffing it into the skin so I'm pressing and I'm like kind of like this literally constantly and moving all the way across until it's nice and flawless now in order to get a nice smooth finish you've got to make sure that your makeup is applied evenly right so we are going to go in and we're going to make sure that this is even all the way across it should not look patchy at all and that's why I have such small movements when I'm buffing. Can you see I'm never really leaving one place and going to a different place and gliding along. And then I just flip the sponge over to pick up any excess where there's a kind of obvious difference. And my sponge is damp. So damp means it shouldn't be wet. It means you wet it until it's doubled in size, squeeze all the water out and then get a tissue, wrap it around it and squeeze it again to pick up all the excess water. Okay, so as you can see, that is really nice and even. There's no patchiness. All you can see is that the under eye area is really really nice and clean. Now we're gonna move over, do the other side. Okay, so the under eye is completely nice and smooth, although we've got to set it yet, so don't worry, we're gonna get there. I wanna talk about the rest of the face. I always feel that when I have only applied concealer on my under eyes and then I go in with foundation and then no concealer anywhere else, I feel like my skin doesn't look as smooth as when it does when I apply concealer on the rest of the kind of other areas of the face. And the reason I like applying concealer on other areas of the face is, isn't really because I feel like I need that coverage. It's more so because I feel like like it evens out my whole skin tone because I actually like a lot of coverage on the under eye. Whereas if I just leave it there and I don't apply it anywhere else and I just go in with my foundation, I feel like then the under eye looks a little bit too much in comparison with the rest of the face. So I like to apply just a small amount of concealer on certain areas because one, it gives me that nice, nice, nice even finish, but two, it also does contour the area. So it helps to give me that nice kind of contouring, lifted look that I like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of this concealer concealer on other areas and you'll see I'm just applying a small amount 
You can go in with a slightly lighter shade if you want because maybe you want to actually enhance those areas. Like I'm going pretty close to my skin color or my face color, but you could actually apply a much whiter shade to give you that really nice kind of brightness in that area. Now I'm just gonna kind of buff this in. I'm just getting my spun, I mean my brush, and I'm just kind of like really buffing it in. And by doing this, I feel like you get a really nice smooth finish because what what happens okay let me explain this right you know how i said to you that i apply concealer i have applied concealer sometimes on just my under eye and then everywhere else i've only gone over with my foundation and i feel like it doesn't look very smooth in comparison to when i apply concealer all over like in other areas like I, how i have just now and then i go with going with foundation what i found was when i have applied concealer on just my under eyes and then go in with my foundation and set it later on in the day my under eye still looks immaculate it still looks flawless it still looks super smooth but the rest of my face where I've just got foundation it just doesn't look smooth for some reason I can start seeing that more kind of textured skin the textured skin looks more obvious in any light I have found that I I prefer putting concealer underneath on those areas to kind of I don't know what it does it almost kind of like smooths the area and gives you that like false perfect skin before you apply your foundation this technique obviously it's called underpainting if you didn't know this is what i want you guys to understand that it can really help with getting that super smooth finish when you have textured skin we've applied the found the concealer on different areas of the face like i said you could go a little bit lighter i'm not going to because i'm very tanned at the moment so i need to make my face look like my neck to be honest and i really hope you can't see my kind of dryness because it's disgusting my shoulders are like peeling it's awful now i'm gonna go in with my dark concealer because i just want to kind of contour at the same time so i'm just gonna do some quick lines on the face Let's go ahead and buff this in. I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Complexion Brush, the fat side of the brush, and I'm just gonna buff it in and keep the shape basically the same, but just buff it out so that all the edges look nice and blended and like fade into the skin. Again, when you're blending this, the result should look pretty even because if it's uneven, you're gonna get patchy skin. So you really wanna make sure that even this section here is nicely kind of like blended into the skin so that it doesn't look like there's an obvious difference. There's obviously a difference there between the darkness and the light shade, but it shouldn't look like, like you know, too much product, too much dark product building up there. It should just look like it's just fading in. Okay, I've got my foundation on the back of my hand. Now, if you don't know how to buff the sponge into the foundation, you need to go watch my how to apply foundation for beginners. It literally breaks down every single step. So you've got to go and watch that. Hit pause, go watch that, come back and you're gonna get the most flawless finish as well as super smooth skin. In a nutshell, what we're doing is we're putting the foundation on the back of the hand, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our sponge and we're gonna buff it into the foundation on the back of the hand, and then we're gonna buff it into the skin. Buff in to the hand and then buff in to the skin. Flawless finish, and obviously we're explaining as we go along how to get that super smooth finish. This foundation that I'm applying is the Tarte Face Tape Foundation 47S. Just buffing it into the sponge. This is where we're gonna buff on top if you don't buff it into the hand first you're not going to get that nice smooth finish we're talking about so you've got to make sure there's not too much product on the sponge it shouldn't be like you shouldn't see any clumps of foundation anywhere so it should just be kind of like melting into the skin so can you see how i am constantly kind of buffing into the skin. The only place I'm really dragging the sponge is on my jawline. I have literally spent time going over each section and making sure that the amount that I buff into the skin is the same amount that I've put anywhere else. So I'm, I haven't applied more foundation in one area. I know that you will come across videos that say, oh, how to get super, super smooth makeup on textured skin. And then all they talk about is one specific product that you could use to help achieve that. Honestly, working with my years of experience in this industry and working as a makeup artist, it is very rare that you'll find 
find one product that does that for you. 99% of the time it is your technique. So I'm not saying that the product isn't important because I wouldn't be using the products that I use otherwise, especially the ones that you see me using on a regular basis. But honestly, paired with technique, that's what gets you that final amazing result. So please do, you know, don't fall for these like kind of one product miracle workers because most of the time it is your technique as well. This part is really important as well. So we've got our foundation on. It does look super smooth, but you can see my kind of open pores. You know, you can see, look, if you go close up, you can really see the open pores here. And that's what I wanna kind of get rid of. Now, like I said, my skin is a lot smoother than what it used to be, but I do still have open pores and slight acne scarring because that's stuff that I just can't seem to get rid of. Although I am gonna be having a treatment soon, which I'm gonna take you along with me. It's, I'm gonna go to the skin clinic that I always go to and they're gonna do like, I don't know what the treatment is, I'll find out. But anyway, it's to help that. We'll talk about that another day. But this basically is my foundation and concealer on. And I can tell you genuinely from experience, if you don't put concealer on the other areas, you'll find that it you, it's the textured skin comes through more easily for some reason. So, okay, what we're gonna do is we, we're gonna set this now. So I've got my banana powder. You can use any kind of powder as long as it is a good fine milled powder. I personally don't feel like the HD powders work that well, but that's just my opinion. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't work for you, but I personally prefer just a normal setting powder. Like the banana powder is good. If you don't want the Ben Eye banana powder, they also do a Ben Eye buff powder, which is great if you have fairer skin than me. Also another powder that works well is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and even the Laura Mercier setting powder works well and also the Makeup Forever setting powders work pretty well too. What I've got is I've got my Laura Mercier powder puff. I kind of like have a few of these, like this one needs to go probably in a couple of more uses in the wash now. I also have my beauty blender and then I have, if you can see here, my powder in my hand. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my powder puff. I'm gonna, can you see how I've got it like that? I'm gonna squeeze it like that. And then my finger goes here, right? So that gives me control and then I've squeezed it here. And I'm gonna just press it, pressing it into the powder. And then I'm getting rid of the excess. I'm kind of like going like that, you know, just to get rid of any excess product on here. And then what I'm gonna do quickly, I'm gonna get my beauty blender. First place we're gonna do is the under eyes. I'm gonna get rid of these lines first. Go straight in. Can you see how I literally very, I pressed it in. I'm also buff, I'm also, none of my words came out right there. I'm basically buffing it into the skin. So I'm kind of really pressing it in. So now same thing here, I'm kind of buffing it in. Again, not too much powder on the sponge, but I'm really kind of like pressing it in. Now here, you can see where I have all that textured area i basically put it everywhere now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my brush this is my hourglass veil brush get the big part of it and i'm just going to take off all the excess powder going to get my real techniques brush and then i'm going to basically dust off the under eye powder now I'm gonna do my brows, so I'm just gonna very quickly work through this because this doesn't really have much to do with smooth skin. So let me just do this very quick and then we're gonna move on. Face is done, brows are done. We're gonna move on to the next step. Now, most of us will use a bronzer and a blush and a highlight or one of them. Now, I'm gonna use all of them and show you how you can get that really nice kind of smooth finish. Now, you wanna make sure that if your skin is already nice and smooth now, you wanna stay away from anything which has shimmer in there. The minute you apply anything with a bit of shimmer, a bit of sparkle, it's gonna enhance anything underneath which is textured. You have open pores which you're trying to hide, put highlighter on top, you're gonna to just enhance. It. You're like, all of that hard work has gone down the drain. So you've got to think about the finish of the product that you're applying. Once you've made all of this nice and matte and it looks really nice and smooth, you want to keep it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a matte bronzer. I'm using my Fenty Sunstalker in Island Ting and I'm using my Hourglass Veil Brush. And you can use, if you want to use like a contour powder that's completely up to you so all i'm doing is i'm just kind of like bronzing my face up but at the same time my main focus is kind of like sculpting but i like to apply a bronzer for this 
Now I'm gonna just go into my Fenty Sunstalker in Shady Biz and I'm using my Fenty 200 brush. I'm just gonna very quickly sculpt my nose. So now I'm gonna use my Sigma Beauty blush in the shade on the screen. Not gonna say it, don't know how to say it. We're gonna go in with a, I'm using a dual fiber brush. This is an old MAC brush. I don't know if they still do it. It's just a medium sized stipple brush. So I'm gonna use this blush shade, just put a very small amount. This is a really nice color and it's matte. Like I was saying, we kind of need to stick with matte shades because everything's super smooth. So we wanna make sure we stick to that. So I'm just gonna apply some of this just kind of going up here. So I get that really nice color, but I'm not enhancing any kind of, you know, like any open pores. This helps me get a lifted finish. Okay, next up, I'm gonna use my highlighter. Now, obviously we want a slight sheen. So how do we apply this without enhancing any texture or making anything we don't want to show look obvious? So, okay, I'm gonna use my one of my favorite current highlighters. It is my Sigma Beauty highlighter in Savannah. And I'm using my 134 brush from Zoeva. Now, I'm gonna get a little bit of this highlighter on the brush. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna start applying this on the cheekbone, but obviously I don't wanna apply it anywhere here because this is where I have a lot of texture, right? So you wanna to stick to applying it on areas where we don't have texture, it's super smooth anyway. Now, if you don't have that smooth texture anywhere, maybe you suffer from acne, I would ultimately try and avoid a shimmer highlighter if you want to keep everything looking smooth. If you are not fussed, totally embracing it, go for it, that's great as well. But if you, like many others, suffer from textured skin and you you don't, you haven't fully accepted it, you, you do want to try and treat it. You do want to keep it looking smooth and you don't want to enhance it then this is for you i would suggest applying it in the areas that you don't have texture so and again like i said if you do have texture everywhere and you don't want to enhance it then just skip this highlighter look but i want to really show you how you can still get that nice finish without it looking like it's enhanced any obvious areas okay so you can see i've kept it really subtle and you can see how that area here is nice highlighted and uh, I'm gonna do the same here it's more or less the same thing here don't really suffer from much texture there in a nutshell ultimately if you apply this anywhere that you have texture already you're going to enhance it it's just gonna happen now I'm gonna get a dome brush don't know what this brush is but any small kind of dome brush put it into that highlighter now I like enhancing the tip of my nose so I'm just gonna very quickly do that and then down the bridge and that is basically how you can get super smooth skin so as as you can see everything is really nice and smooth we still have that slight glow in certain areas but we've made sure we've applied it on areas where we don't have that texture i really do hope that this has shown you that the application is really really important when it comes to trying to get that smooth finish and something that does also last all day i personally feel that when you do these little touches like you know like a little bit of highlighter at the end of the nose things like that then i feel like it takes the attention away from any texture you may have anywhere else all these little things that i've done all help to try and take the attention away from anywhere where I feel like I have texture. I've nicely sculpted the face, I've got some color in the face, so a little bit of blush, which isn't too obvious. It's there, but it's not like, okay, there's so much shimmer. So the only amount of shimmer that I have is literally that area here and on the nose a little bit. And I feel that that is enough, honestly. So, you know, I really do hope that you've seen that the, the, the technique is really important. So don't just go in with everything or just think that one product is gonna solve it. Try and apply your foundation and concealer in this way so try the concealer underneath foundation try it in all those areas if you don't feel like you need much concealer then just keep it at small amounts just put small just a few dots and then spread it out honestly try this technique and i feel like you're really going to see the difference i do hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope it's helped you to create the smoothest look possible if you have any questions let me know in the comments box below don't forget all the products that i've mentioned are listed in my description below too so all you need to do is click on the links and it will take you straight to it now as always if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos until the next video take care and i'll see you soon